Dr. Gonzalez speaks to this question first about the essential knowledge and skills needed for nurse practitioners and Yes. Yes, yes, of course. Um, you know, through the course of uh, history, uh, human beings, we have asked very interesting questions like, can a mixed race guy have a soul? Can a woman vote? Can a woman be president? Can uh, a nurse take on to more roles and, and, and actually be an educator or probably even a provider, you know, like a doctor? M my very polite answer is, duh, yes, of course. <laughs> Nevertheless, are, are interesting questions. Now, now the thing is, I, I'm not a professor, you know, and I joke about it that uh, uh, actually I'm a professor in I don't know how many oh, universities, lots and lots and lots. None of them pay me because I just gather their students, but I don't provide curriculums or things like that. So, so I like different kind of approach. I like the basics. And for talking about the basics, I want to ask you a question. Can you raise your hand if you know one substance, one chemical that can cure, heal, or improve cancer, AIDS, uh, high, port, high blood pressure, diabetes, schizophrenia, and depression? Do you know one substance that can do all of those things? You should. It's called placebo. <laughs> yes. When we want a medication to, 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 to be approved, we compare it to placebo. And in all those illnesses, when we compare to placebo, some people get better. Some people get healed. Some people get cured. Now, is always placebo the same? No, some studies show that in, in this country, which by the way, we don't have the best medical system. We don't, but we trust our medical system. Placebo effect can be as high as 50%. Whereas in other countries where they don't really like their doctors or their systems, might be as low as seven. The challenge here is, is, is not how the, the, the sugar pill performs, it's how you perform. Because you're the placebo, we are the placebo. You see, how can we do to make people get better? And in that we need for them to trust us. I always ask my, my students, what is the most important goal when you meet with your patient? First one is to achieve trust, to have a relationship that is therapeutic with the patient. And we, psychiatrists, we used to be at the pinnacle of that part, you know I mean? Why is that, you know, a lawyer can date a, a client or a teacher can go to a student, but the psychiatrist has never uh, be going to be able to date a patient? Because we assume, we thought, we believe that we have achieved that kind of knowledge and know the power of the relationship with, we are by basically now losing, you see? Now, nowadays, the more we move to biological psychiatry, the less we talk about the psychology of the relationship, the importance of, 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 of people trusting and, and how is that we can impact into them to get to know us. But you, your nurses, you empirically know it. You, you know because you care, because you talk to the patient, because you, you are there sometimes like the doctor doesn't. That's the reality. You tell me if I'm wrong. But you, you have that empirical knowledge. If you ask me about the skills, we need to do it more scientifically, or you need to do it more scientifically. You, go, you need to go on and do what we're losing and study the therapeutic relationship, the different models. How can you do for the patient to be connected to you, to say, that is my provider, that's my nurse, that's, that's the person I trust. Why? Because that's what heals them. Medicine is the art and science of healing. Art comes before science for a reason. And the reason is because the state of the art today is the stupidity of tomorrow. But if your patient trusts you, the patient's gonna get better. So that's the first and most important skill that I want you to have. You need to make sure that you continue being able to, to, to make sure that the patient trusts you, likes you, make sure that this, that is my, my person. Now, let's talk a little bit about the next uh, skill, if you don't mind. And uh, if I'm monopolizing, let me know so I can just. <laughs> and uh, uh, the next skill, uh, 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 again, it, it, it's, it's about your knowledge and how to do. No, I'm sorry, let me go back. Um, the next skill is about what is important in medicine. And we were mentioning a little bit about it. The importance is not the difference between the, uh, one pill and the other. That's not the difference. What makes a difference in health when it comes to countries is hygiene, it's not smoking, it's uh, not excessive drinking, no drugs, a healthy uh, diet, and exercise. Now, if the person doesn't respect you, if the patient doesn't respect you, if the patient doesn't trust you, 
are you going to have an impact on those things? Never. But if you are respected, if you have that trust, and you do care, and you keep insisting and pondering, no, you need to quit smoking. No, that drinking is not good. No, we need to eat healthier. Yes, you're going to have huge, amazing impact in the life of your patients. So, yes, that's the next thing. We need to really concentrate on what is important. The next part, which I love nurses for, is you need to help on diagnosis, and you do it, you know. When I go to regular hospitals, because they, they, they want the psychiatrist, you know, the surgeon is about to, to discharge the patient, and the nurse, no, why not? Well, the patient thinks he's in a church, and it's 1960. <laughs> 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 well, the patient is delirious, but the surgeon passes by, ah, oh, it looks okay, bye-bye. No, 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 you know better than the doctors. And this is the part where we need good diagnosticians. I have some patients that get to me and, and they get the report, a patient is cutting, angry, uh, uh, blowing tantrums, and uh, diagnosis bipolar. Does that make sense to you? Because it doesn't to me. We need help, and we need help, we doctors, we need help, and we need help for our nurses when it comes to diagnosis, to the assessment, to the screening, to make sure that we have a good understanding, that we have a, 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 an extra rapport. You know, in my hospital, we always talk, I don't want my nurse to tell me, the patient said he's depressed. What's the point? The patient's gonna tell me that. I want, I want to know how he's doing the rest of the day when I'm not looking at the patient. And that's exactly the rapport I get, so I get a lot more information that I can simply have by talking to the patient. That's the value of my nurses, and I love them. They give me great information. So the diagnosis is accurate. I tell my residents, you want to do a good psychiatrist, first thing you need to do is you nail the diagnosis. If you don't nail the diagnosis, you're lost. So, and that's where the nurses have great impact. The next part, can you move forward? Can you, can you be a, a treatment provider? I'm simply going to tell you, I do have some of the best already. I don't know if we're still the only one, uh, the only hospital, but uh, uh, we, until recently, we're the only hospital that had uh, nurse practitioners working in inpatient. And they do great. Actually, you know, I mean, one, well, all of them are trained for that, but one specifically does all the time. She goes and represents the hospital in court when we take a person to court and explains to the board, which is a doctor, a psychologist, and a, a community person, to explain our diagnosis, our treatment, and our recommendations. She represents all of us, all the hospital. is represented very often on a daily basis by a nurse practitioner. She does great. Actually, all of them do great because they're all cross-trained, so they do great. So yes, of course you can. And even from before, I used to be the chief psychiatrist of the state, of the state hospital in, in New Mexico. And I, I, that's when I started with a, with a nurse practitioner. I used to joke with her, you're my best psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Dr. Freud said that the biggest truths in life are told in a joke, okay? So, and yes, I mean, she can't. Why? Because I exposed her to all the most difficult cases, and she was able to grow with that. So the last thing that I need to say is, please, we're moving into a, a, a world in which we're talking about being paid more and doing less. That's not okay. Please, we need to go bring the, bring the, the pendulum to, we need to do what we need to do, period, which is what we always say in the hospital. You know, when my nurse asks me about one more patient, or one more say, well, we need to do what we need to do. We have a responsibility for a community. We have a responsibility for our patients. And it's not about how much we're making or how, how little I want to do, it's about my patient. And that, if there is one profession that understands that, is nursing. So it's about the need of the community. Please, let, let's go and do what is necessary. The beauty of doing what is difficult is that they say in Africa that easy waters have never made good sailors. So making sure that we take a tackle this kind of big problems that we've heard about is going to make you great sailors because you're already good ones. So thank you very much. Bridget, do you want to talk about what you think the knowledge and skills are for nurse as a nurse practitioner that is needed? Um, I think one thing that Dr. Gonzalez also touched on at the very end there was saying about exposing the nurse practitioner to a lot of difficult cases. And so I think a lot of it is, is getting into various levels of behavioral health care and understanding what's offered at those levels and really uh, from the get-go um, just having your hands on patients at all of those levels and, and understanding what's going on beyond the medication, beyond um, a symptom list. Uh, I think that's really important. 
Marilyn, the next question I'll have you answer. Um, what do organizations need to make uh, psychiatric mental health practice successful for nurse practitioners and psychiatric nurses? From an organizational perspective. From an organizational perspective, I think I think one of the things is that we need to have really clear communication. Um, nurse practitioners, especially, are graduating with different um, um, a different amount of experience. Is that better? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, nurse practitioners, especially, are graduating with a different level of pre training experience. Many nurse practitioners have worked as psychiatric nurses for many years and have a lot of experience. Others, just a few, and have gone right into the program. So when they join a practice, it's very important to, to communicate clearly between the, the practice manager, the supervising psychiatrist or the psychiatrist that is supporting that nurse practitioner and the nurse practitioner to make sure they have the same ideas about what kinds of supervision, support, availability are, are required. So I think that's a, a big piece. And then the other piece is the culture of a practice needs to be, you need to identify, and if that practice is inpatient, partial hospitalization, outpatient community programs, are nurse practitioners going to function as um, extenders, or are they going to function as independent practitioners? I don't like that word extenders, but I mean, that's what's used at times. So I think everybody needs to be on the same page with that. And as far as nurses, RNs, I would say it's the flexibility to be able to move into different roles. Uh, they need to have the skills to be care managers, no matter where they are. They need to have the skills to be um, educators, family support. They need to be able to work in a community setting. I was, I was very interested when it was mentioned earlier, do you do a job share? When I think of some of the readmissions that, we come, into the, that come into the hospital, it's because some of the community programs are not able to support the patients in those programs. So if a nurse were to have a job share, and work in a hospital and then also in those community programs. I think it, those kinds of things are what we have in the future to work for. Okay, um, APRNs have training and skills to perform many functions. However, reimbursement agency permitted scopes of practices such as working inpatient often contrast to these. What are the challenges for reimbursing, um, maximizing scope of practice, and maximizing NP's time for consistently changing systems and evolving roles? So really kind of getting at why we can't be reimbursed in some settings as NPs, what are we, what do we foresee? I can start that, so yeah. the business, <laughs> business end of it. Part of the problem is the inconsistency. Um, different payers, Medicare, Medicaid, different insurance, commercial companies have different requirements and expectations of what nurse practitioners can do at different uh, levels of care. And I'd add that it's very difficult to even get this information. You know, you, you try to approach an insurance company and say, what are the requirements? It's very difficult to get that. So if there could be consistency, uh, or at least transparency, and that's brought forward, I think that, that would make a huge difference. This is going to be fun. Yeah. Um, I think with that, as someone in practice, and Terry, you've probably come across this, is that we are licensed to do many things, but often not authorized by the payers to do things. For example, anyone who works in child and adolescent, we know our patients move through different levels of care, and I have patients who need a higher level of care, but I have to send them to a psychiatrist to get that signed off on rather than my own recommendation. So oftentimes I'm having a physician who may have never set eyes on this kid making a recommendation um, because I'm not permitted to do so. Or um, I work with a lot of disabled clients and I'm not able to order adult diapers for them. Our doctors have to sign off on that, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, but that kind of what Marilyn brought up, you know, the, the culture of the practice and, and if your physicians are aware of these things and willing to work with you. It's wonderful. So we have to do a lot of education on those needs. It would be nice if we didn't have to do it in the first place. Um, but so it's, it's got to be a lot of, of moving parts working together to, to maximize what we can do as advanced practice nurses. Thank you, ma'am. Oh. Oh. Thank you. Uh, no, not working, right? Is it on? That's yes, okay. No. Well, I, I'm loud, so don't worry. So, yeah. <laughs> Or can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 Okay. There you go. Uh, well, you know, danger. Uh, it's all, also an opportunity. I mean, uh, I think that uh, that situation happens in 
every single specialty, e everywhere, you know. I mean, the, in my case, for example, as uh, doctors, you know, we don't get paid for uh, a, a nurse practitioner or a PA call me from an ER uh, just uh, asking for help. Well, you still do it, and then uh, one day that is going to change. That somebody told me that that could be, probably is about to change, that we actually might have a code for just consultation. Oh, great, but in the meantime, let's do those things. Uh, uh, right now, we have uh, also the, the issue with uh, uh, an, a hospital for we're, we're consulting, and uh, they probably don't have the actual the third party payers, and also, but, but they need the service. So they actually pay us out of pocket because they know that our service is so, so important. And I'm right now convincing them, well, I want my nurse practitioners to do it. So I can, we're kind of opening the, 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 the possibility there. And, and, and again, through without the actual payer, but the hospital might end up one, uh, wanting to do it. So I think, again, yes, it's a problem and has to be changed. But at the same time, I would not be just paralyzed. I would like you to keep moving because, again, once people know that what you're doing is good, what uh, the service is necessary, that might convince other people. With, uh, whether it's, if, you, if we don't do it until they decide to do it, it might never happen. So let's not stop doing it. I think also, um, I know I'm not supposed to be speaking, but um, <laughs> I think also this calls us to advocate legislatively, you know, how we vote, how we look at things, because I think as nurses look we're, we're a huge body of people, so that we're voting and presenting to our legislators to change these practices. That'll be the last time I talk about anything. Okay, <laughs> next question. Predictions indicate integration of behavioral health and psychiatric care into primary care has a greater role in management of chronic conditions by nurses. And we talked about that earlier, the most important part of some of our roles. What do you envision as a future of outpatient role of psychiatric nurses as behavioral health becomes more integrated? Do you want to, Bridget, you want to start with that? Um, so I've been thinking about this, and I, as listening to Dr. Stewart's presentation and, and talking about how nursing kind of silos itself, and I think we, when, when we come together and we think about different roles that need filled in healthcare, I think all of us go, well, nurses are, are the perfect person to do this. So we, we have all of these skills and, and we kind of overcommit ourselves and we want to own it all and yep, we can do it all and then we sit there and go, all right, where do we even start to do this? So I, you know, I think we need to, like I function kind of in the middle. I, I am a resource to the pediatricians in the practice I go to. I think that's a great role because um, I'm right there. They can ask me questions. They can call me. We have a really great relationship for doing that. I can work with the psychologists. I'm managing my own patients. Um, I think what I need to be careful to do is, is not wanting to just hold on to my little piece of the puzzle and be just make a more effective team out of it. Um, you know, and I, I don't know where, I think we're best suited to do all kinds of things. I, I think it's just teaching us to manage our time and to do it really effectively. Um, I think it's also opening the eyes of, of the folks that we're working with to what we can do. Um, you know, where, where are we best suited? Can we manage really severe cases or are they just kind of the standard ones that the doctors don't have time for anymore? Um, so it's you know, educating, kind of standing up for ourselves and, and really also educating our patients of what we can do for them. Well, um, I think it's an interesting uh, puzzle in which we're asking uh, peers from an apple tree, at least from the doctor's perspective. You know, what I'm trying to say is we base our system on a specialization. And then we want to go back and really work with every, every kind of specialty. No, not going to happen. And actually, you know, we're doctors again. Uh, uh, so you might expect doctors to do like a parallel play like kids in the kindergarten, or, or maybe you can achieve some collaborative play. But more than that, sorry to say pessimistic, not going to happen. But with nurses, oh, well, that's different. I have three nurses that the three have uh, their advanced nurse practice for family practice and psychiatry. They're worth gold for me. I mean, they're just amazing. But again, that, that's a different perspective. You're not spending all these years on specializing. You're actually you're starting where every kind of patient and every kind of situation and, and just concentrating on a couple of them. We need more of that. We need more, more of you, actually. So 
that is going to be creating a really integrated care. Because every time I have a new doctor and I, I tell them, you know, I mean, if you feel competent enough and, and you want to treat a patient for diabetes, have low pressure, you can see their hair. Oh, God, what are we <laughs> talking about? But, but you can also talk to the, the internist comes and then ah, relax, you know. But, but no, I, I think that you can do great more than that we're, we're doing because I'm sorry to be pessimistic. It's difficult to ask peers from an apple tree, or in this case, uh, from a specialist to go back and try to do all kind of care. But you can. I think you do. How about we address like the psychiatric nurse that's going from like a psychiatric clinic to a primary care clinic? How do you see that role? Well, I, th I think uh, to begin with, there are so many different models as has been, been brought forward. And I don't think that's bad. I think that means that we have different models that work in different situations, in different cultures, in different populations, with different providers. Providers have a different, um, some, of the, some physicians are very comfortable working with mental health patients. Some physicians are not. So I think those different models do work in different, in different areas. But I really see that nurse practitioners are really well suited to be able to support those primary care physicians as a consultant to be able to reach out and find out. Um, not only do they, I mean, they don't just have to reach out to psychiatrists, they also can reach out to psychiatric nurse practitioners when they have a, a specialty case or something that they really want a consultation. Maybe they can maintain them then in the primary care office. I also think psychiatric nurses have a role in primary care offices because the, the care coordination, the, uh, the motivation for um, compliance with medical illnesses, the skills that psychiatric nurses have are, you know, are excellent to, a, to be able to support all patients in that population. I guess one other thought that I had, and even, even thinking about um, the education component of this, is that I think um, I want us to remember that, that psychiatry is a specialty, and I hear a lot of educating, you know, adding layers on to the FNP program going back and, and taking psychiatry as an add-on. I don't think we can separate mental health care from physical health care. I also want us to honor that specialty. And, and there's a reason that I didn't go into the neonatal NP program when I haven't been in a nursery in 20 years. You know, I did some time completely in, in behavioral health and uh, came into the advanced practice role after that, and so I, I want us to remember that, that mental health care is, is, is a specialty and it's not something just to be laid on top of something else so that you can kind of maximize what you're doing, that, that there is a special set of skills to that. 